Hello and welcome to Chili Bee Gaming. I'm Evie and today we're back with some more control as part of our Sunday fun day playlist. And last time we were here in the warehouse searching for these ID cards and we've got one more to find. And there's one more place that we've still got to look. So, let's get into it. Haha, -ha, okay. Now, I believe round the back of here there was a door. If memory serves me. And it does. Can we open this? Oh, hey, we get. Ah, I see. There's the last one. Perfect. This ID card was for an excavation engineer. Ooh. Why did so many people abandon their cards down here? Yes. Why? What? What? From what? From a layer of dust on this place, nobody swept here in years. Not even Ati. No way he'd stand for this. Hmm. There's okay. an elevator, which I'm sure is super safe. Mm hmm. In a space in each terminal for an ID card. But which card goes where? Yes, which card does go where? What's that say? Can't read that box. It's got to be. A, there's got to be clues, haven't there? So these look like weapons. So maybe this one's. Um. Security chief. I suppose. Yeah, well, we'll try that, because, I mean, a weapons, you know, security dude would carry weapons, wouldn't they? This is, um, keep off the tracks, open pitch, suppose this would be excavation, maybe? Chief, maybe cartographer, because cartographers deal with maps, don't they? Um, well, let's, let's, let's have another look around. This maybe uh Oh another folder, we'll have a look at that. See that looks like one of those earthquake what's it called? Seismograph? Is it a seismograph? And then what's this? Um maybe maybe the head of research one? Hmm. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go with that. Um, let's just see what this, this folder is. This might give us a clue. Ash request denied. Okay. Federal Bureau of Control. Dr. Ash, as Chief Excavation Officer, it's my job to support the research team. So I got you your machine for that ridiculous sand research project. However, it's also my responsibility to ensure the safety of my crew. Do you know how many trips it took to get an entire bulldozer down here piece by piece? And do you know how many of my guys we lost in those trips? Here's a hint. Too fudging many. Which brings me to my point. I'm writing you today because of this request form that just landed on my desk. Apparently you want a lightweight one or two man military grade helicopter for the purpose of surveying the vast expanse of columns by air. I bet you didn't even stop to wonder how much time, money, effort and blood this toy would cost us. Well, no, sir. I am sorry, but I will not subject my men to another month of marching through the death trap upstairs. For Christ's sake, these people have families. Not that they ever get to see them anymore. Request denied. Lewis McNary. Okay, so McNary is Chief Excavation Officer. So, is this McNary's desk? Possibly. Um, possibly. Y ah, pickaxe, pickaxe. So this must be the cartographer, senior cartographer. Okay. And the what is that noise? God bless it. What? I don't, well, have we already put one in here. Yes, we have. That's head of research. So. Physicist would probably have instruments or something for physics. Do you suppose? It Please. worked. Hey! Now we just have to get on a rickety elevator that goes who knows how far now. What is go oh hello? Go away. Alright, let's get in here. 
I mean, that was sheer guesswork. I'm kind of kind of happy with that. Okay, let's sit. Uh, oh, uh, let's go basement lab. What are we gonna find down here? Anything? Oh my god. Oh, oh all right. Still, this lab's way tidier than any of the Okay, so there's a valve there. What's this? I didn't even see what that was. Never mind. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Oh, fridge. Good God, what happened to the table? Did I do that? I don't think I did. Ah. Alright. What else? Anything else? Okay, well, all right. What does the valve do for us, I wonder? Let's find out. Does it do anything? Find Dr. Ash's notes. Okay, well, we can do that. Would they need such a heavy door down here? Yeah. What's in here? Is something gonna try and do me? Okay, yep, 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 yep. Processes designer Gibbs? Oh my god! Oh my god! What the hell was he? Okay. Explosive energy recovery. Okay. I mean, considering this was supposed to be one of the tidiest offices in here, we kind of made a mess of it. Never mind. Never mind. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. So, what's this? This looks like the nail. It does. Mini. Mini nail. Tiny nail. Ooh. So, is there anything on here? Nope. Just a general, um... Okay. So what have we got here? That's obviously his notes. What's the... this? Northmore, final warning. Ooh. From the desk of Director Northmore to Dr. Theodore Ash Jr. As Director of the Federal Bureau of Control and Chosen Representative slash Liaison slash Benefactor of the Greater Authority of the Board, I demand your immediate withdrawal from the Foundation. Prior memos issued broadly to Foundation staff called for swift resignment of all personnel to the upper levels of the House. All staff complied except you. This demonstrates a lack of respect for my office and the Board itself. This is their house and we are their guests. We should conduct ourselves accordingly. Normally such insubordination would be grounds for dismissal, but... Out of respect for your late father, consider this instead my final warning. The board and director Ash chose me as successor to the office, and no amount of petulance will change that. Indeed, your actions seem to suggest you know better than myself, and by extension, better than the board. Permit me to assure you that this is not possible. Sincerely, Director Broderick Northmore. Hmm. Curiosity. Have we seen all this? I think we have. We might as well read these. Astral Mimic. Field research on astral entity, astral mimic. Confidential. Summary. Astral mimics are physically indistinguishable from astral copies, but considerably more dangerous due to the fact that they possess para-utilitarian abilities. The most notable ability witnessed is levitation. It is unknown how this astral entity gained its paranatural abilities. The relevant objects of power are currently bound to Director Faden, which indicates the objects are not responsible. However, objects of power are intrinsically linked to the board and the astral plane. A similar link between the objects and the mimics could also exist. Or perhaps the board is able to dispense these abilities at their leisure, with no trial in the astral plane required. The prevailing theory, however, is that the entities are simply replicating observed abilities performed by the Hiss, or even the director herself, thanks to a prolonged exposure to our world caused by the astral bleed. Refer to file redacted for full report. Hmm. Okay. 
interesting. What's, 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 what's this? A document. Aha. Uh -huh. She's this notes. some kind of code. Can't read a word of it. So you have to take, I should take this back to Emily. Yeah. Tell her I got into Ash's secret lab. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, well, I mean, considering it was a secret lab, there wasn't really much secret in it, was there? It was just the usual, you know, garbage. All right, let's um, let's go and see Emily then and see what uh, she can tell us about this here document. Emily, oh, hello. Here we go. I found Ash's secret lab. Excellent. Please tell me everything. Spare no details. Uh, well, there was another cave. The walls were covered in paintings of eyeballs. The research seemed dedicated to studying a kind of smaller version of the nail. It looked like the same material as the one up here, but just a different shape. Well, are you sure you didn't see any functioning prototypes? Or at least some schematics? I mean, Dr. Ash was a very accomplished engineer. None. Sorry. I did find this handwritten note. Wow. Ash had terrible handwriting. <laughs> Never meet your heroes, right? That looks like a transcribed conversation between Ash and someone named F. Ooh. Oh, this is juicy. This will take me days to parse out. Maybe weeks. Have you ever thought about taking a vacation, Emily? Are you kidding? This is my vacation, Jesse. Okay. Yeah, Emily's Emily's a little she's a little out there, aren't you? A little weird. Alright, let's just have a little peep, shall we, at our what we've got to do. Hmm. Okay. We've still got to do Langston's runaways. Old friends. Hmm. Locate his corrupted Thomas Psy. Hmm, we could probably do that, couldn't we? In the containment sector. Yeah, all right. Let's 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 do that. I know Emily's got another thing for us, but let's um let's actually ask her. Emily, now that this nail business is handled, I should probably be getting back to executive. But maybe I'll keep poking around. Just for a little bit. Um. Yeah, what do you know about the former? What do you know about an entity named Former? I can't say I've heard of it. You got any details for me? Well, imagine a one-eyed bug thing. Yeah. I think it was a part of the board, but then something happened and now it's... separate? Interesting. See, I always wondered if the board was some sort of entity or a group or conglomerate of linked consciousnesses, but this supports the group theory. Although I could have undergone some sort of corporeal exile. Too many unknowns to form a working hypothesis yet, but I can prioritize this matter in future astral dives if you think it's important. Fortune favors the prepared. Do it. Mm. Yeah, what, um... What can you tell us about Northmore, actually? What do you know about Director Northmore? Well, uh, he was Director Trench's predecessor, and Northmore's famous for being the first board-appointed director. Huh? See, before he found the oldest house, directors were picked by committees of old men in suits, drinking cognac and smoking cigars or whatever. You know, standard, uninteresting methods. I think the word you're looking for is bureaucratic. Or antiquated. Regardless, Northmore was eventually forced to... Well, we don't need to go into that. Strangely, the only two board-appointed directors left the position under uh, unusual circumstances. Mm. If the board appoints a director, then how do they retire them? I doubt they go out and buy you a gold watch. Sorry, Jesse, I, I didn't mean to imply that... Don't worry. If anyone's getting shown the door, it's them. Oh, Jesse. Okay, what, what about the nail field? What do you know about that? Has the nail been doing anything since we restored it? Define anything. Anything unusual? Define unusual? Emily. Sorry, but the answer is a whopping yes. Now that it's whole, the nail is emitting a constant field of, well, think of it like low-level radiation. 
It seems to suppress any biological matter it encounters. This explains why nothing grows here and why the Bureau had to abandon the area. Prolonged exposure would certainly begin affecting neural processes. Hmm. Wait. Was the field created when I cleansed the nail? I considered that, but the nail's readings are quite different from the ones I recorded at the cleanse control points. I think the nail's field is purely of its own making. In fact, I think it would passively prevent any his corruption, like the HRAs do. Which makes me wonder what actually occurred when you cleansed the nail. Hmm. I've been wondering about that myself. Did the board let the Hiss corrupt the nail? Did they want me to cleanse it? If so, why? Yes. Hmm. Well, thank you very much, I'm Emily. I'm looking around. I wish I could go with you, but I still need 30 hours of training before I can do field work. We'll work on that. I mean, yeah, all right. Well, okay. So we need to go and um, we need to go and find this dude. So let's go and find this dude, shall we? All right. So Thomas Sai is going to be in here. Well, there's one of those stupid ball things. So that's that thing dealt with. Oh, there you go. Now that was fun. <laughs> Okay, so we know the ball thing's down there. Ball of death, as I call it. Ball of death. I don't know whether that has anything to do with Thomas' side. I don't. I don't think it does. Okay. Where are they? Where are you? Oh, you're down there, are you? Well, I don't particularly wish to come down there because I don't want to have to deal with ball of death. But Oh, there you go. Oh god. Oh no. Jesse, let that go. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. It's coming round that side. Okay. Oh, did not enjoy that. Was not a fan. Gather up what we can. Oh, oh, oh. Jesse doesn't want to get up. There we go. Oh, thank God for that. Goodness me. Alright, so we've got to locate this dude, but where would he be? Where would you be, sir? Where would you be? Look at it. Horrible thing. Ugh. Hate it. Hmm. Sterling AWE Ordinary Dump Site. Oh! Oh! Okay. Right, so we need to get up there, essentially. Which we can do. Let's uh, just gotta be clever about this. There we go. Look at this! Wow! Okay. Hello. Yeah. Oh, there he is. Okay, this is not good. There. I guess wow. the bureau should start looking for a new head of communications. Definitely. My god. The battle ro So what's this thing? Big rock. Jeez, Louise, that took some doing. My God. Okay, what what what's this? Sterling summary. Ooh. Sterling AWE-46 event summary. A paranatural object appeared in a field outside of the town of Sterling, Colorado, near a billboard advertising redacted. No civilians were injured, though a family dog has been reported as missing since the event. Oh dear. 
Event response. Local authorities arrived on the scene and began issuing orders over a monitored line of communication using several watchwords flagged by the Bureau, including redacted. Bureau agents from the regional office were dispatched and arrived two hours after local police. The situation was contained and analysis began. Bureau research staff arrived the next day and examined the object. After redacted days of evaluation, the object was lifted into an enclosed truck with built-in black rock panels and relocated to Bureau headquarters via the subway transit system leading into the oldest house. Ha, huh. so that's this thing. Can we... okay. Let's not, let's not be silly about this. Gotta be sensible. So it's just a big rock, by the looks of it. Is there anything else up here? Oh, hello. Something. Ooh! Entropic echo. Nice. Nice. See, these look like slabs that have been taken off it. Maybe they have. There's more of them down here. Yeah. What's that about? What is that about? Okay. Let's uh, head into these offices and just have a little peep. See what's what's in here. Any info? What's this? Oh, recording. You're listening to America Overnight. Now in our 29th year, lifting the veil between fiction and reality. Thank you for staying up with us. I've been getting a lot of calls about this meteor in Sterling, Colorado. Uh -huh. There are reports of a large spherical container that crash landed in a field outside town. Some government people reportedly took it away. Mm. Now, we happen to broadcast from Colorado, and Sterling isn't far. I drove down myself to check it out with members of the America Overnight team. I don't need to tell you, it wasn't long before we found pieces of metal debris scattered in a field. Listeners, this is yet another instance of an unidentified flying object, or UFO, entering our airspace and crashing. That the government took away the evidence under cover of darkness only compounds the fact that these are more than likely visitors from beyond our planet, or dare I say, solar system. Oh my. Head on over to our website to see pictures of the spacecraft pieces we uncovered. And while you're doing that, our sponsors would like your ear. America Overnight will be right back. Hmm. Very interesting. <sighs> My goodness, what would... Get out of the way! Oh, I mean, this is probably me that caused all this mess, but still! Hmm. Something seems a bit off. If you know what I mean. Hmm. Okay. Aha. Uh -huh. Another thing here. We need to go and speak to Emily. What a curious thing, though. Just a big rock. You kind of want to know... I mean... What? Why? Is there anything in it? Why is it smoking all of a sudden? That looks, that looks weird. That looks very weird. Well, all right. Okay. Um, what's this? Dodge efficiency. Okay, so we need to go and speak to Emily now. Ball of death. You wretch! I hate that thing. It freaks me out. It's like it's going to eat me. <laughs> okay. Okay, so Emily's here. There she is. Could survivors be hiding inside? It's possible. I remember a report about a similar incident from days before. The Bureau lost contact with a whole department mm. of the house ship. Hello, Emily. I took care of the Tomasi problem. Oh, Tomasi. Sorry, I 
forgetting it was a coworker. Don't apologize. That wasn't the real Tomasi. He died when the hiss got him. True. You're right. I just didn't want to be insensitive. Sentimentality is a weakness in situations like these, Jesse. Ooh. It's Bureau 101. I don't think Emily's in danger of being called sentimental. Mm. Um. Hmm. Yeah, what do you know about the board, Emily? I found Dylan attacking the astral plane and the board. What was he hoping to accomplish? Huh. Since they arrived, his have been corrupting objects of power, which have an inherent link to the astral plane. Maybe their goal was to access the astral plane and the board itself. Maybe. It still doesn't tell us why. His motives are a difficult thing to work out, but I have been digging through confidential files and noticed a strange gap in knowledge regarding the board. Looks like any data on them has either been deleted or was never gathered in the first place. Hmm. Then maybe it's time someone looked into that. Maybe it is. Huh. Okay, um... Yeah, what do you know about this, the HRA failure? So, there was a moment after Hedron died, that I couldn't feel my powers. The hiss got into my head. Just for a moment. So that explains the HRA outage. Before we knew what was happening, the hiss had us. Oh, God. They were in my head. I saw terrible things. I mean, I was about to go under forever when the hiss was pushed back. The HRAs had come back on. And Dylan vanished afterwards, and we fought off the hiss that came after him. So if Hedron's death knocked out the HRAs, that means there must be a new local source for them to relay. Which, I'm guessing, must be... Me. Hmm. You. Hedron is dead, assuming that word even applies to a resonant-based life form. But whatever it awakened in you, the power you call Polaris, is still active. Or at least, that's what my instruments are telling me. I don't think we're ever going to understand all of this. And I'm okay with that. I'm just glad you're here with me. That's good to know. Hmm. Thanks, Emily. Yeah, how's Dylan doing? How was Dylan? The same. I, I can't detect any his activity, but his physiology has certainly been altered by it. And I can't tell if his brain activity is genuine or simply the aftermath of the hiss, like spasms. Dylan could wake up tomorrow for all I know. I really can't say. Then I just have to wait for him. That's fair. Yeah. He waited a long time for me. Don't worry. We'll be monitoring him round the clock. If he wakes up, we'll be ready. I don't mean that in a hostile way, just... Well, you know. Mm -hmm. I hear you. My brother isn't exactly popular around here. No. I hope one day he'll have the chance to change that. Yeah, what about Dr. Darling? I think she was one of Dr. Darling's favourites, wasn't she? When the hiss got into my head, I saw some weird things. I think Darling even spoke to me. Does that make any sense to you? Well, empirically, no. But phantom voices, as well as hallucinatory states, are not uncommon here. And considering the forces that Dr. Darling was working with, he could have been transferred to a different plane of consciousness, hmm. physically or otherwise. And that doesn't upset you? Oh, very. And the fact that he hid those forces from me? It's infuriating. But Darling's dream was always to look beyond our reality. This time he may have taken a step too far, but as long as his consciousness can perceive his surroundings, I'm sure he's loving it. <laughs> Maybe Darling was just trying to protect you from the darker side of his work. Fuck that. I'm not a child. Like, don't just assume I'm going to consider something morally repugnant. Which it all was. Which it all was, of course. Hmm. 
Okay, yeah, what do you think of Jesse as director? How do you feel about me taking over as director? You act like it just happened. You've been director since we first met, remember? I am still thrilled. Nothing's changed. Not for me. But the Bureau has changed. Trench mm. and Darling are gone. Their knowledge, anything not written down, disappeared with them. They knew the Bureau better than anyone. They're the Bureau's past, Emily. We won't operate like they did. We'll learn from their mistakes. We'll be better than they ever were. We won't ever be like them. No. Okay, well, that's yeah, that's fine. Thank you, Emily, well, for your time. I've got a time. bureau to run. See you soon. Mm. Yes, ma'am, Director Faden. Wonder if she's. Please, Emily. Yeah, don't. Not don't. even as a joke. Don't be silly. Don't be a silly goose. Yeah, she's not written any more reports. Okay. Okay. Let's have a little peep, shall we? Hmm. Oh, good lord. We could go and deal with Langston's runaways, you know. That might be something that, that we should do in all reality. Yeah, let's, 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 let's go and do that. Good god. Okay. Oh, hey, we got some more, we got some more ability points, though. Um, maybe, ooh, oh. Ooh, shall we? We're going to save up and get that. We're going to save up and get that. That's no normal piece of paper. Oh, come on now. Goodness me. So, this is the... This is the moving letters. Letter. Okay. Okay. Oh. Sneaky. Where'd it go? Oh. What in the world? Nearly. I'm just going to wait. Come on. Okay, so there's what, three pages? Something like that? Three, four pages? Hmm. Now the question is, where will they be? Will they be in here? Or elsewhere? Let's have a look. Oh no, they are going to be in here somewhere. Hmm. Bloody letter, honestly. Oh, causes me all sorts of grief. Oh, hey, what's in here? Fake planes? What? Dear New York Tribune, airplanes aren't real. I figured out how they do it. The windows are TV screens. The whole thing moves on big tracks like a roller coaster that moves through underground tunnels in the earth. Airports are more like train stations. They do this because the sky is full of monsters that they don't want us to know about. The planes we see in the sky are the monsters. The government made the earth trains look like the monsters so they could lie to us better. Don't contact me. Would you want to? 
Good grief. What a, what a suggestion. What a suggestion. There's bloody... Oh no, we watched that already. I remember watching that. I don't like those. Communications. So, these letters are in here somewhere? Hmm. Okay. Ati! Oh! There we go. Got it. There should be one more page. What's this? Ooh. Smoking ban. Okay. Oops. Smoking ban. Dear elected official, thanks to the recent smoking ban in my state, I am happy to inform you I will not be voting for you in the next election. As everyone knows, smoking is being banned because the smoke is toxic to the aliens that the government sold our planet to in a secret deal. If humans keep smoking, the aliens won't be able to live on Earth. Our air would be poison to them. If you government traitors can't stop people from smoking, then you won't get your millions of dollars from the aliens. I have a website. People know what's going on. We're going to keep smoking no matter what. This is a national emergency. Politicians are handing the planet over to alien overlords. We won't let you. We will resist. I will smoke forever. Signed, a proud smoker slash rebel slash patriot. Slash somebody who is cuckoo bananas. Okay. One more page. One more page. And we can get in. Woo. All right. A thousand here. Oh my god, there's more of these. White kitchen? Okay, what's what's white kitchen? White kitchen. Dear gentlemen of the Society of Sciences, it has been some time since I sent my initial letter. I hope it is not the case that you have dismissed my claims outright. In that hope, I am writing you to once more ask for your help in understanding the oddity that has befallen me in my home. I have recently begun renting a new apartment in the city. The space is nothing special, though for a time I have found the isolation quite soothing. Recently, I have been experiencing strange, a strange occurrence. When I am in my kitchen, a tiny little thing with not much but a sink, I sometimes lose myself. My surroundings change. I find myself standing on a strange dark stone. I stare out at a colourless sky, as white as undisturbed snow, terrified of moving. Perhaps this is a brain issue. I think not, as it feels terribly real. This has been occurring for some months now, and I have become frightened of entering the kitchen. If it is not too much of an inconvenience, I would dearly appreciate a visit from one of your professionals to see what they make of it. I await your response with little expectation, but with great hope. Very truly yours, Lorraine Fitzgerald. Well, Lorraine, I don't know whether anybody came to see you, but, well, hopefully they did. And sorted out your problem with your kitchen. Because nobody needs a kitchen that's trying to do them in. Right, let's get this last letter. It's got to be up here somewhere, hasn't it? Hmm. Ah. Is that it over there? I saw the red glow. Ah, what are we here? Another document. Pinstripe World. Okay. I'm a plate... I'm a plaid suit in a pinstripe world. I'm a plain suit in a pinstripe world. Yeah. I wonder what the redacted section was, because all the rest of it's just, I'm a plaid, is it plaid or plaid? Plaid suit in a pinstripe world. All right, I'll take their word for it. 100% all the way, take their word for it. Ooh, lovely. Undefined reading. Oh no. House memory. What's this? Cat clock. Okay. My clock is shaped like a cat and its eyes move and I think it's angry but I keep apologising and it won't stop. But I said I'm sorry, 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 but it won't leave me alone. And I don't know what it wants. I can't keep apologising. Fo do. You see... It now, too, it told me everyone is here and I need to be careful so they don't see me writing this letter. It wants me to stay with my eyes on its eyes and moving very fast, but I can't keep going and I worry they will forget about me. So 
I need to write you about this because I can't keep going, but the cat will because of its eyes. Redacted. Mm. That's a little weird. A little concerning. Not going to lie. But it's fine. Not a problem. We can we can deal with that. Oh, there you are, are you? Come here. Oh, you. You. Tell you where it's going to end up. Here. Done and done. Oof. What's this? Letters procedure? Ah, there you go. Moving letters, AI-77-KE. Containment procedure. Black rock panelling suppresses the item's effect. A stack of four envelopes, each containing a single page of paper. All four letters are illegible due to extreme water damage. The envelopes, curiously, do not show any sign of such damage and are covered in messages of love. The items are able to move short distances at a pace of less than redacted and always in a redacted direction. This is the first altered item to have multiple separate parts, a fact previously believed to be an impossibility by Redacted. A proposal to take the items outside the oldest house and follow their movement to its final destination is under consideration with the Budget Committee. See file RTO-7158 for full details. Background. Items was found in the Dead Letters archives where the herd archivist found it attempting to escape a filing cabinet. She reports having no record of the items in her archive of letters. Interesting. Very interesting. What else have we got here? Our whereabouts. Hey, you have questions and the prophets have your answer. If you are truly intrigued, watch the time. We've lost about 45 days in the past four years. The shortening of days, this is why the Vatican is a sundial and also simultaneously a keyhole. Another thing, while I'm here, if you want the secret to everything, compare plasma next to brain cells. The sun and moon are composed of plasma, simply light, not planets. After this is cemented in your psyche, ponder the current whereabouts of where you, I and humanity reside. Cheers. All right, another cuckoo bananas letter. That's fine. Hmm. Oh my God, there's loads of stuff here. Blimey neck. Ah. What's this? Another file. Vivid dreams. Okay. To the esteemed members of the American Psychiatric Council, I am writing you to inquire about the significance of dreams in relation to one's mental health. I am aware that there are many books purporting to contain the true meanings of dreams, but I have reservations about their legitimacy. I understand that this is not usually done, but if I would greatly appreciate your thoughts on my condition. Ever since I was young, I have had intensely vivid dreams. They only occur sporadically, but in them I witness very strange events. I understand dreams can seem real at the time, but these feel markedly different. They do not occur often, perhaps only one or two a year. Last night I had one. I saw a small empty town. It was utterly dark. There was a lake at its centre. Shadows of people moved around me, muttering odd things. A bright light woke me up. I was screaming in my sleep. My wife had been shaking me for minutes before I woke. Because of this recent incident, I have decided to seek help. The doctor says I am physically fine, but I want to consult your expertise. Thank you for your valuable time. Yours very sincerely, Richard Bowker. Mm. Very, very curious. Very strange. Very strange goings on here. What in the world? Look at all these letters. Are the elevators full of letters? I can't believe I've started calling them elevators instead of lifts. That's that's very random. Because obviously we say lifts in the UK. We don't say elevators. But... Maybe it's the, um, all these Americanized games rubbing off on me, which, hey, no problem. All right, well, now we've, we've caught the letters, we can, um, descend, and, uh, that is where we are going to leave it for today, folks. Next time we'll probably, well, we might go after the, the Japanese paper lantern is a curious one I'm, I'm quite interested in. So we might go after that next time. But until next time, be safe, be good, and look after yourselves. <laughs>